put out by the WikiLeaks folks. Yes, I remember that. Th- there's an element of that in there too. Like um, a van comes to rescue the people who had just been shot by the American helicopter, and uh, they blow out the the windows of it and actually kill not killed, but they severely injured some kids that were helping to rescue the people yeah. who had just been shot. Yeah. Um, there's also an example of it in in fiction, and I don't know if this was inspired by American foreign policy or not, but in Hunger Games at the end. Uh, spoiler alert if you haven't read it yet I think you should have though um, that's actually the rebel strategy when they're trying to conquer the imperial capital they uh, they blow some stuff up in the center of town uh, killing a lot of innocent people and then uh, when a lot of the officials come to clean up in the army and the EMS then they blow them up too because they know they're going to be attracted to that hot point all that all that blowing people up man it's so square and you know a lot of what we do on the freedom fiends isn't so much report the daily news and go this is horrible because there's so many people doing it so well you know there's there's uh adam adam scott john horton. show there's scott horton <laughs> there's jack yeah. blood there's free talk live you know they're kind of like the newspaper of the day which is important and we're kind of like the philosophy book you know <laughs> uh we we tend to we do talk about some tyranny today but we tend to talk more about um uh the underlying philosophical timeless concepts and we like to cuss a lot which we're going to try not to do on here much <laughs> yeah i mean we want to talk about philosophy but we don't want to sound like a philosophy philosophy class you know we're, we're trying to take the the school feel out of it um we want to have fun we want to laugh at the state not and that's the other thing is we don't want people to be scared of the state or cower in fear and be worried about the new world order um i i guess raping them anally we don't want you to be scared of that uh we want you to be a prepared and b um have a have a healthy sense of ridicule for the state and laugh at them but uh not let them turn you into a cowering mass of a person hey nima we're getting some notes here that you sound a little distorted and louder than me is there a way to turn down you uh yeah i can i can certainly turn down and then people listening will 30 seconds later they'll hear the difference because uh the way that streaming audio works is there's a built-in buffer of 15 to 30 seconds depending on your internet connection and uh, we do like to talk about tech stuff. We like to talk about tech stuff, weed, guns, chicks, cars. What else, man? Anarchy. 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 Anarchy in the UK. Yeah. Uh, um, do, do I sound better to you? I mean, what, what kind of distortion are we talking about? We okay, talking about- well, let's leave it at that and wait for the buffer to catch up and people can uh, talk about it. Um, one thing I do want to talk about today is uh, we talked yesterday on our podcast, Freedom Fiends podcast at Freedom Fiend. F E E N S dot com, all one word. We should explain what a fiend is first. New audience here. What's a fiend, Nima? Yeah, man. Well, if you listen to modern hip hop, you know what it is already. I mean, it's in like every single song ever written. Fiend. It's, yeah, it's, uh, some, it's, it's in there more than the other F word. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, f- from everybody from the Black Eyed Peas to Jay Z to any underground cat is, is going to know what fiend means. F E E N. It's, it's basically fiend, like crack fiend, I think is the history, the etymology. Uh, but it's so, so much easier to say fiend. I mean, why add that little D, that little half syllable for fiend? That's dumb. So we're the freedom fiends because, um, we fiend for freedom. We want it and we're going to do what it takes in our own personal lives to get freedom. We fiend for it. Yeah. Yeah. That that was me using it in a sentence. And um why do you like uh I mean, when I said freedom fiends, you at first you were like, Well, I don't know about that, but it sounds kinda like a little kid would say fiend. But I think yeah, it's we, more of the, the street speak to me. But either way, whatever floats your boat. It's both. I mean it's you know, I wasn't trying to hide like, oh, we're not street and scary. No, it's how a little kid would say it. I just I think it's cute, it's how a little kid would say it. And also in German, fiend means fairy, which we found out well after starting the cast. So we right. are the freedom fairies, apparently. Right. Although I th- I thought somebody let us know that fiend is actually like the plural. So fiends wouldn't mean anything because the S wouldn't make it yeah. plural in German. Well, Americans love to uh to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To so we might as well too. <laughs> to anglicize root words of other, uh, you know, Teutonic right, or right. Latin or Greek or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, um, you check out my medias. You like my medias? <sighs> your medias. Yes. Your medias is good. I want to make concert with you. That's what they'd say <laughs> when my band bomb was in Germany. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, they'd be, we'd have a day off and if someone would want us to come play at a party. They'd say, we want to make concert with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds right. I mean, concert sort of means well, together. Cons- yeah, it means like you know, harmonious. You. We want to be harmonious yeah. with you. We want right. to make beautiful right. music with you, baby. Yeah. Isn't that what they said, too, in um, 
Heavy Metal in Baghdad. They, they, the guys, they'd be like, oh, well, we made this show and then we made that show. Yeah. Uh, you know, not we put on a show or we yeah. played a show. We made it. We made it. We built this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we built this. And Barack's like, no, you didn't. Yeah, I just all right. It. So everyone's saying the audio is perfect now. Whatever we're doing, I'm gonna have to keep take doing f- it. I'm gonna take pictures. I'm gonna steal some time from the fiend and take a photo here of my mixer settings. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a high quality digital camera next to me. Well, maybe I do. Hold on. Yeah. So anyway, while Nima's stealing time from the fiends and off getting stuff, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the power of the free market in words and neem and i call ourselves anarchists but there's a lot of problems with which word you use you know if you say you're an anarchist people think you're a communist you want to blow stuff up if you say you're a libertarian they think you want to vote uh which we don't do if they you know if you say i'm an agorist it sounds like a farmer and it requires explanation if you say i'm a voluntarist they think it means you build houses for habitat for humanity or something so We've searched for long and hard for word, and the closest thing we can come up with that we both like is market anarchist, uh, which Nima also pointed out could sound like you're against the market, like you know, like like uh, or I'm you're politi- ambivalent. You're ambivalent yeah. to it. Yeah. Like political agnostic means I don't care about politics, and market anarchist could sound to the uninitiated like I don't care. Well, about we don't. The market. We don't want a market. Yeah. 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 Um, but to us, it means that the. The free market, the the exchange. A lot of times, libertarians and anarchists say, "Well, the free market would take care of that," which we say too. And it's it sounds really simplistic to statists. They go like, it's, "It sounds like saying magic or God. <laughs> God would take care of it. You God know? would take just, care of it. Which, just let Jesus take over." Which your life, a lot of statists of say, especially politicians. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, it's. But we like market anarchists because we look at the market not just as the free exchange of money or valuables for goods and services, but for any human interaction, you know, yes. having sex is market. And I'm not saying all sex is prostitution. I'm saying like, you know, if you get someone to want to have sex with you and it's mutual and, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're trading something. use of your sex organs with somebody else <laughs> and, and the mind behind them, I think more importantly, right. Well, uh, yeah. but you know, I mean, us doing this podcast right now, we're not making it this live show. We're not making a cent on it. And, uh, it's it's the market. Neem and I are trading something with each other and with our listeners. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If um if we weren't prepared to do this, if we didn't get some kind of uh, benefit from it, then you know we would find something else that would benefit uh, ourselves for our time. You know, like uh, I don't know, playing video games or something. So I wanted to talk more about the free market and Richard Stallman and uh, his problems with it, but also his like perfection of it in a way um you got to start off the new show with some pod beef don't you pod beef well <laughs> it's not pod beef i really respect the guy for the uninitiated yeah. richard stallman is part of the holy trinity of the invention of what's commonly called linux but is really called gnu slash linux uh richard stallman came up with gnu which is kind of like um the car and they would they didn't have a spark him, him and his team and then uh they didn't have a spark plug for the car the kernel and Linus Torvalds had the spark plug and he's like, Oh, here, use my Linux kernel. And it became what's known as Linux, but really is like, you know, way, way higher percentage of GNU than Linux. But Linux is just a sexier word. And GNU is a hard to pronounce recursive acronym. And, uh, Richard Stallman has spent a lot of his life, um, trying to get people to use the term GNU slash Linux, even though the free market has decided, no, man, everyone calls it Linux. You know, the free market of words. It kind of, it kind of reminds me of this, what he does, kind of reminds me of a stateless version of how people want to make like English the official legal English only, only yeah. language. You know, um, he's trying to do that probably without the government guns. Although he did say he's a liberal. I wanted to interview him for my podcast, Anarchy Gumbo. And we went back and forth and he had a list of demands as long as my, <laughs> um, and it was, and that's long. Let me tell you, that's long. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he wanted, he was like, well, you're going to have to completely start putting out two formats on your podcast, you know, OGG as well as MP3. And I told him that would break the feed. And he's like, well, then you're going to need to start another website and link that that has the OGG files. And I'm like, I am not adding, you know, four hours a week to my work and confusing people to do this. You know, this is going to reduce our listenership, not increase it. And he wrote back, 
My goal isn't building anyone's listenership, not even my own. It's more to lead people to reject abusive computing practices, including non-free software and patented formats such as MP3. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. He he had a problem with MP3s, and I just don't understand that. It is to me, it's a de facto free software. I mean, we use MP3s it's, all the well, time. We we output everything in MP3. Everybody downloads MP3s. Yeah. What whatever's unfree about it, nobody notices, and it doesn't affect it's, the average it's like user. Pro, it's like alcohol during prohibition. It was illegal, but no one stopped drinking it, and probably more people stopped drinking it, started drinking it. Uh, and well, not it even that, because it doesn't have the enforcement that. Exactly. It doesn't have the enforcement. There's no social stigma. I mean, uh, you, you ask anybody. Most people don't know this. Most people think yeah. MP3s. That's how you trade free pirated e music exactly. or your own music. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and he said, if I spread the word by means that practically in speaking encourage, ugh, if I spread the word by means that practically speaking encourage what I'm trying to oppose, it's self defeating and even makes me hypocritical. I can't say yes to that. I can solve your problems, however, he said. Uh, what are your said, problems? Uh, I, I, that I'm not using AUG instead of MP3 uh, uh -huh. and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, this, this was an email exchange that went on for eight emails each that were long. And one of them was like his list of demands of, okay, you have to read these five websites and learn what right. terms not to use with me. It kind of reminded me of like, you know, like eminent, like riders with Van Halen, like you know, there will be no green M and M's, no brown right. M and M's. You know, you must do, email me a GIF of green M and M's. Yeah, you you will not, you will not. Uh, well, I think it have to be a ping because uh, gifs okay. aren't um, PNG free software. Right. Yeah, but it kind of okay. reminded me of like you know, a friend of mine was a stage manager on tour for Michael Jackson when he. Oh, was, really? You know, I didn't know that. making his like about nineteen ninety one, ninety two, no ninety five, okay. I think. And she was like living in Brunei when he was off to her and like, you know, the w in his compound that the prince had given him in Brunei. Wow. So he could go do whatever he wanted with little boys. But uh, outside of hey U.S. Now. jurisdiction. Hey <laughs> that's Michael Jackson. He's the king of pop. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but Jackson. she said, I mean, come on. She, she worked for him for like two years, like in a day to day capacity and was not allowed to make eye contact with him. Really? Yeah. Huh. It was in it was in her contract, and and I, did Michael impose that rule, or did like some of his handlers, his handlers impose it? But it was based on his desires. Weird, weird. And um, you know, I think at this point it'd be I think it'd be easier to get a an interview with Michael Jackson than with Richard Stallman, probably back then. But even now, <laughs> you could probably get. Yeah. Well, if if you think if you would have um, submitted to Stallman's list of demands, do you think he would have granted you the interview? Uh, yeah, except it goes on because uh, let me read more what he said. I explained to him like the the problem of how the podcatcher would break if there's two enclosures in the feed, which is right, kind of fun right. talking about here on Adam Curry's network because Adam Curry co-invented podcasting. He is the pod father. The pod father. Yep. And um, yeah. I remember being at the, uh, I was a speaker at the 2006 or 2007 New Media Expo in Ontario, California. And uh, Adam pulled up in a limo. I wasn't there. I was up making love with my wife because it was our first wedding anniversary. And actually, this weekend is our sixth wedding anniversary, although it's really our seventh because that's our legal government anniversary. But we consider we're married from uh, when we met or shortly after. So, but uh, yeah, I was I was up in the hotel making love with my wife and I came down and like all of the podcasters were buzzing and trembling and talking. And I was like, what happened? What's up? And they're like, Adam Curry was here for a minute. He pulled up his limo <laughs> and... And and they shook some hands and left. I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, it was it was rock star level. Uh, it's fun to be on here talking about enclosures is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So Richard Stallman went on and said, I can only guess what a podcatcher is, but, but can it cope with the presence in the RSS feed of links to other HTML pages? If so, that leads to a straightforward solution. As for making OG files, your machine can do that for you easy enough. And I said... In the other email I'd written him and he quoted this part, I said, you know, he said, I told him I'm a market anarchist and he kind of went like, ugh. Uh, he said, that, I'm a liberal. <laughs> yeah. 
Which really surprised me because I thought he'd say, I'm a dialectical Hegelian, Hegelian Marxist who believes that we need to uh, incorporate some of the thoughts of the medieval, medieval <laughs> guild system because he's so into like specific language. But he said, no, I'm a liberal. Right, right. So I'm like, really? With, with like the voice of a character from Daria, like, I'm a liberal. <laughs> That's how I pictured it. He kind of <laughs> looks like comic book guy on The Simpsons. But, um, <laughs> but he said, I said, that would make for a better interview because conflict is the essence of drama. And then I said, I think this was the deal breaker of why he's not. Good. He said, I said, I would love, I love to talk with peaceful statists about why they think government guns should be used to enforce the common good. <laughs> and he wrote back, this is his final line in the email. He didn't even sign it. He just said, this is a disagreement over basic premises and values. It is not useful to argue about them. And I would choose to do something else. Hmm. Well, so it's free to do that. It's good for him. (laughs) Yeah, the Richard Stallman interview on Anarchy Gumbo is off permanently. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I mean, who needs him? Eric S. Raymond was awesome. I know. And Eric got everything he needed out of that. He's a a, a market anarchist and a gun gun enthusiast. Yes. I I said yesterday on the cast, and there's a really excellent thing in that Linux, uh, I'm sorry, GNU slash Linux documentary called The Code, where Eric S. Raymond asks Linus Torvalds to go shooting with him. And uh, Linus is like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shooting's awesome, man. How could you not go shooting? I don't know. You've been shooting lately? I got more to say on Richard Stallman, but... You know, I, I, I haven't. We'll, t- we'll talk about guns a little bit later. Okay. You got more You got I more, got more to say. Um, okay. All of this was kind of like, ugh, you know, to me. And, like, how can you be so into the free market with giving away software and still think government guns should do things for you. And he's really anti-government too, man. I heard him on Russia Today like bitching about, you know, intrusion and the things that are happening that we bitch about all the time. But, you know, he's like, I don't have a cell phone because I don't want to be tracked where I go. And like, But I, I thought you said he, FDR is like one of his favorite politicians and he quotes other liberals. FDR and Dennis Kucinich. Dennis Kucinich. I like Dennis Kucinich better it. because he agrees with Ron Paul on about Ten percent of the things, and uh, on, he he's, he's good. A, he's good on foreign policy. Sometimes. He's got a really hot wife, man. Hot, <laughs> smoking hot wife. For a little troll, Dennis Kucinich has a uh-huh. hot wife. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh, the thing that comes to mind about this whole Stallman thing is like, I kind of get where he's where his struggle. I understand his struggle because he's he's banging his head against the wall trying to get you know billions of people to use the word GNU slash Linux instead of Linux. Um, which is a matter well, of him. Is that, is that really on his mind on yes. a daily basis? Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of feel like at this point... Every interview, should... every, everything he sent me all says that. And the other thing is... Well, what, what benefit does that have to the world other than making him feel better? And he wants to use the word free software instead of open source, and it means something slightly different to him. But free software is a confusing term because it always has to be followed with free software that's free as in freedom, not free as in beer. You know, right. right. Free, Whereas, like we're not going to give it, we're not going to give it away to you. Not that kind of free. Well, yeah, because there could be free software that costs money, and there can be non-free mm-hmm. software in his definition that cost that is free of charge. Right, right. But, but isn't uh, it so much easier? Just and and people know exactly what you mean when you say open source. It describes what it is, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and not only does it describe what it is, but people have accepted that definition. I mean, that's that's the most important thing in the market in general. Is is if there's um. You know, if people accept what's being offered, that's how you know that it'll keep happening. I mean, people yeah. are going to keep saying open source until something comes along that's a better way of saying it, uh, or until it's a concept that we don't need to talk about anymore. Um, you know, the market yeah. will decide what to do with it, not uh, not Stallman. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so not, not only does he not have the ability to change these things, um, I don't. I don't see a benefit if these things were changed. I mean, what great social ill would be solved if everybody said good new Linux? What know, great social ill would be solved if people said free software? I mean, he did the source? thing that changed the world. You know, he enabled Linux to happen. I mean, somebody else might have done it anyway, but not the way he did it as quick as he did it. He made GNU. Uh, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, well, Linux is like hard to use and arcane. You need to be a programmer. That's BS now. I mean, you can pop in some distributions of Linux and use them as easy so you can use Windows and do yeah. more with them. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's an important thing, too. I mean, L- Linux has been around for a while and has had dozens, not dozens, but, you know, tons, I guess, of uh, different distributions. So that's like yeah. saying Microsoft's hard to use. You got to, you know, put things into the DOS command line. And <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, you did 15, 20 years ago, but not anymore. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, what Richard Stalin doesn't realize is that, um, oops, Richard Stallman, not Stalin. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that, what, that was an accident. I'll, no, I'll, that was I'll an give accident. you an accident on that. Um, yeah. Mulligan. Richard Stallman, like the thing, I mean, I heard it in, like he said, he's quoted in some book as saying like, uh, you know, I wish I'd killed myself at birth rather than lived a life where I'd had to struggle like this with, with what I'm trying to do and get people to agree, understand it. Which is <sighs> well, amazing and just mind blowing. It is. It is to me. I mean, maybe he needs to read your your self help book or something. Uh, I, I mean, don't know. PDF's not a. Uh, oh, not not a, he can't read it. He can't read it. <laughs> so send him a copy. Michael. I'd have to send him a physical copy of it. But well, I think I mean, now if anything. What, came what do you have to me, say about that? Doesn't that seem mentally unhealthy to spend all your time on something that's just going to give you more notoriety? I mean, I don't want to. I guess we all do that in a sense. I but, don't want to call him mentally un- unhealthy. That's that's petty. And, okay. Okay. Uh, it, it does seem kind of like staple hand to forehead, like, oh, poor me. But the guy changed the world and did like, it's like a thousand times more important than the language or the credit, I think. Exactly. Exactly. And exactly. people say Linux is hard to use, but everyone's a Linux user now and doesn't realize it because half the phones out there run on Android, which is built out of Linux. And I mean, GNU Linux, sorry. Um, and... Uh, the whole uh, much, of the, much of the infrastructure infrastructure the is, is if you Linux, yeah. if you use the internet, you're looking at something that went through Linux servers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing that I was going to say to kind of wrap this all up is I do understand his struggle of trying to like of knowing you're right and trying to beat your head against the wall to get the world to understand it. It reminds me of us trying to explain lib lib pair to a statist to statists. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we do share something with him in that. Um, except, I, I guess the big difference for me is, you know, when I think of live pair, I think of a, the whole world being changed uh, in things that matter. You know, not the the Basically, word we use for something. Basically, if the whole changing. world worked like the GNU open license, you know, like the way GNU slash Linux works, if the world worked like that and politics worked like that, we'd be in live pair. How does he not get that? Because <laughs> he won't talk to you in person. <laughs> I know. I might scare him. Well, uh, I mean, triage, man, triage, right? I mean, yeah. we're not here to argue till we're blue in the face with status. I am. No, no, you, we not, don't. you block people on your I, Facebook. I do, and then I just not say, not, well, not because they want to argue, not because they disagree with you, but no. you know, I have a they're... couple socialists who are my friends in life, who are my friends on Facebook, and I have right. blocked several libertarians and market anarchists because they were rude. I block right. people when they're rude. I blocked a Teamster recently, who, when I said that uh, Romney and Obama were the same, uh, he said, "I'm going to hunt you down and eat your face." He said that about you. Yeah. When you said Romney and Obama were the same, he said he was going to hunt you down and eat your face. <laughs> eat my face. Oh my god. Yeah. So there's wow. there's cannibalistic zombie zombie teamsters yeah. out there yeah. in Illinois somewhere. Well, you're well prepared for the zombie apocalypse of one, so I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely ra- understand of, you blocking him. The ratio of um guns to humans in my house is at least nine to one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like and the ratio of tumbleweeds to people in Wyoming. Yeah, and more importantly, <laughs> we know how to use them, which, you know, they say, uh, be afraid of the man with one gun for he knows how to use it. The number of guns doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's it's the right. amount of ammo, but more importantly, the, the knowledge and uh, ability. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I, I want to have a gun of all the different important types, you know. Gotta have a shotgun, gotta have a battle rifle, gotta have a semi-auto rifle, gotta have a pistol, a couple pistols. You're a pretty good shot, though, man. The the Guns and Weed movie opens with you, and this was like two years ago. This is like your eighth time shooting or something. It opens with you hitting a dinner plate at 380 yards with a 64-year-old commie rifle with iron yes. sights, and you did it in two right. shots. The first shot, you like hit the dirt about two inches to the right of the dinner plate. And the second shot, you busted the dinner plate. God, yeah, that was an amazing feeling. Um, and it was with the the short version of the Mosin Nagant yeah. rifle. Like yeah. the one I use the now carbine. is the super long, giant, you know, uh, you, as tall you got, as me rifle. You got, uh, you got the, uh, the Zar model. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you saw that picture I put on Facebook. When the bayonet's on, it's as tall as me. Yeah, and I, I do insane. call it the Zar model because... 
The Mosin Nagant actually first came out in 18-something, and the first ones were stamped with the Russian words, meaning property of Tsar Michael on them. Uh, I want one of those. Cause, I, doubt, I doubt mine's that old, but it's that style. Because, um, you know, Tsar Michael kind of sounds to me like, uh, since I'm Michael, kind of sounds <laughs> like, um, you know, our, our running jokes you're, you're, about... You're king of the castle, li- king of the castle. Libertarian tyranny was our running joke, which is kind of <laughs> why we called ourselves the Freedom Fiend's Agenda. You know, because yeah, it's on yeah. the No Agenda show or stream, but we're like, we're not No Agenda. We have an agenda, which yeah, is our yeah. joke, a running joke about, you know, when I'm libertarian tyrant of the world, I'll, uh, I'll, everyone that's not on my golden floppy disk of redemption will be dragged off by my libertarian soldiers to re-education right. camps at libertarian right. gunpoint. Which right. is ridiculous, yeah. but it's yeah, a joke. it's 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 opposite hyperbole. It's making fun of the ridiculousness of what it's exactly not. Yeah. Uh, uh, other things I've seen like that. Have you seen those posters like on people's Facebook walls that are like, uh, it's like an old fifties poster of a girl running away from a monster or a fire or something, and it's like, uh, beware of the libertarians. They want to take <laughs> over the world and leave you alone. <laughs> I know. I, I heard like you know, and a lot of people think that the small government constitutionalist liber- uh, Republicans who aren't even small government or constitutionalist people a lot of people think that's what a libertarian is which is ridiculous which I think is intentional uh, you know 1984ing of terminology by the enemy um, but well it, it's intentional and right white ring right wing Republicans co opting the language Republicans. yeah white and right wing Republicans Nima's not white for people that uh, don't know Nima's I'm, I'm a- half white man you're you're half Italian, which is kind of yeah. dark, and you're uh, half Iranian. Persian. Iranian. Yeah, per- yeah, Iranian. Persian. <laughs> What's up yeah. with Persian cats, man? And I'm, man, I'm they got pecker- squishy faces, and I'm it's a, crazy. I'm a pecker wood who lives in the woods <laughs> with too many guns. <laughs> no, I, I remember the first time I saw a Persian cat, because it's not like Persians have They look Persian deformed, cats. man. They look like someone they kicked them. Yeah, no, I got offended when my, my now wife, then girlfriend, we walked by and this bike shop on the street in Austin on the drag, and there was a, a Persian cat had a squishy face, and I look at it, and I'm like, I'm like, what's wrong with that cat? <laughs> and she goes, she goes, oh, it's a Persian cat. And I said, you take that back. <laughs> and those are like one of the most desired pure breeds there is. And, and I, I, but they look like somebody punched him, impaled him in the face with an ugly fist. If, like, but, you know, when I think of Persians, I think of like... The three hundred, you know, I think of not the movie. I mean, <laughs> well, weren't weren't they monsters in the movie? The three hundred. I don't know. I'm thinking about before that. I'm thinking about the term Mulan Labe and where it comes from. Ah, uh, 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 yeah. You know, when I think of Persians, I think of brave, mighty war. You know, if I was gonna name a cat a Persian, I think it would be like a bobcat would be a Persian cat. You know, something uh, that could, you know, that that's a little bigger than a house cat that could kill you. <laughs> that could rip you from limb right, to limb. Right. That'd be a Persian I don't know. Cat. I, I think South Park probably got it. Uh, more correct in that episode where Mrs. Garrison is trying to hold on to the lesbian bar, but a Persian guy bought it. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no. Yeah, and they're, and they're like, oh no, the per-, and it's, it's basically a spoof of 300. And they're like, oh no, the Persians want to take over our bar and put up ugly blue carpet and golden curtain rods. Well, and there is that kind of like got- Euro trash Persian thing of yeah, like, you yeah. know, hey, the, L- the LA Persians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so talk a little bit more about Persia, how your dad left there. Oh yeah. Well, um, my dad, along with a lot of his uh, peers, um, you know, they were from the more well-to-do families in northern Iran by the Caspian Sea. And um, my dad was like, "Well, I'm going to go to America, get an education." While he was in America, you know, the revolution uh, happened. So it's not like he was going to go back. <laughs> and a lot of people uh, in his sort of peer group, um, I guess sort of had the same thing happen to him. You know, people who, who came over to, to America and they were more open-minded. Uh, I don't want to say liberal in the sense of modern, you know, American liberals, but liberal in the sense of, um, you know, socially liberal, believing in freedom, uh, not believing in religious conservatism. And all of a sudden you have your home country is taken over by a religious zealot. Uh, you know, after the revolution, Ayatollah Khomeini came in power. Um, you know, imagine if you went, to study abroad in like I've studied England or many France. Abroad. <laughs> well, okay. But so say sh- say when you were, it's it's akin to if you were over touring in Europe or when you were over touring in Europe, and then all of a sudden, um, 
John Hagee had a revolution. John, ha- yeah, and John John Hagee is the dictator, or or Pat Robertson becomes the dictator. <laughs> you you would not go back home. <laughs> uh, so he and his brothers uh, ended up staying. I don't know a whole lot about the timetables for my different extended family, but um, most of my extended family, or a lot of them, came over here uh, after that and around that time. And um, I guess I'm a first generation. That makes me a first generation. I guess you know I'm the first of my dad's family to be born here in America. Um, so yeah, and and so I guess that sort of colors my worldview. It always has. I've always been very interested in the Middle East, uh, foreign policy, um, and of course I've always felt like a lot of um, a lot of American foreign policy in the region is wrongheaded and plays on a lot of stereotypes that I firsthand know are false. And so it's easier. It was easier for me at a younger age to see through the lies and realize, hey, wait. Just because somebody's from the Middle East doesn't mean they're a terrorist. It doesn't mean they want to instill Sharia law, and it doesn't mean they're a religious fanatic. None of my dad's family is religious. I mean, maybe my aunt on his mom's side is is religious, and I see her maybe once a year. Uh, everybody else is secular, you know, just just like normal Americans. Barely any difference, except they like to eat a lot of rice and, and lamb kebab. Lamb. Hey, you know something, Nima? Um, mm-hmm. I just remembered. We are a call-in show. Oh, so if yeah. you're listening to this on September 27th, 2012, you can call us. The live studio number is, is 30. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. It's 307-215-5171. Again, that's 307-215-5171. Yeah, we were too busy yakking about ourselves. I know. You can also Skype to username KittyFeet1. That's Kitty like a cat, feet like your foot where your toes are, and number one. Right. So yeah, live studio number 307-215-5171 or Skype to username KittyFeet1 here on the Freedom Fiends Agenda. Yeah. And we're we're about at 37 minutes. So if you want to take a break anytime in the near future. Uh, I don't. Got, and we don't I've say got music break. Up. Remember? Ah, uh, that's what I meant. Cuz we're not using yeah. Linux computer. I mean GNU/Linux computers, so <laughs> they might crash. Yeah, Michael has a habit of having to save the recording every twenty minutes. I guess it went a little long there, but uh, it went thirty. Yeah. I'm doing thirty. It'll work. 30. I think it'll work. Okay. We're, uh, let's talk a little about the technology we use to do this show, because uh, you know there are geeks uh, out there, fellow geeks, and um, some of them are still on the feed here from from Adam's oh. show. We have uh, eighty five listeners on. Okay, on score the Nag Radio, <laughs> and we got. <laughs> 19 more on our server so yeah well yeah we, we like to talk about gear too that's one of our uh one of our items we talk about we're kind of do-it-yourself media guys um so we each have uh tons of computers around us or several computers five. around There's us five in the room I'm, five. In. I'm using three of them for this yes i'm using uh four pieces of hot equipment i guess i've got two computers you i've got stolen? a cdj no hot like they turn on and they make my room hot. Yeah, we don't uh, steal. We don't steal because it's uh, immoral. And it it's violates aggression. the non-aggression principle. Yes, yeah. we don't steal. We don't advocate for any taxes. We don't. Uh, we don't vote because you know if you vote, uh, whoever you vote into office is going to uh, immediately violate the non-aggression principle. So yeah, no, none of the, When I said hot, I didn't mean any of these are stolen. Even Ron Paul. Ron Paul is our favorite government thug. As a friend of ours said, but he's still a <laughs> government thug. I mean, he's still, it'd be really interesting if he became president, but he won't. And uh, I like him as a philosopher. I just don't like politicians. He's, uh, you know, he, eh, anyway. So, I, I, um, go ba- I go back and forth. I mean, Ben Stone says that, you know, the reason liberty has gotten so big is because there's been a m- bigger market for it since the government has been increasing tyranny. So once you notice the tyranny, you want your freedom more. I think that's definitely you know, if not the main factor, the, one of the big ones. Um, but I think Ron Paul did have a role to play in the fact that, um, you know, a lot of us in the liberty movement, when you say, how'd you get there? A lot of people still say, you know, oh, well, I learned about Ron Paul in 2008. Um, I know, know a lot maybe- of people, a lot of people have said, I started with Ron Paul, then went to Alex Jones, and then progressed <laughs> to the Freedom Fiends. Yeah, yeah. It, there's similar paths. Um you know, I, I don't know if if that's just because people were looking for something new, but I think it was 
it was very amazing to see Ron Paul there shut Rudy Giuliani down uh, uh. with the blowback thing. I mean, that that's a, a classic moment. That's like Carrie Strug doing her vault with the, the broken leg and whatnot. <laughs> you know, it's a great moment in, in American media. Um, Not so to I, say I think, that Ron Paul was crippled in any way, but he was crippled in the fact that he was talking to mentally crippled people. Yes, he was, he was at a Republican debate, for yeah. God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, that, that's a crippling effect right there, uh, ev- knowing that everybody, nobody in that room agrees with you pretty much. Um, so, I mean, so he, he's very, I, he's very politics, brave. And, man. Screw politics. Let's talk about gear. Politics gear, yeah, blows, we, man. It the does. state blows. Politicians blow. And, uh, we like Ron Paul though. He's a good guy. But so I'm using, let's start with microphones. I'm using a Natty RMS5 microphone. What are you using? It's a ribbon microphone. Isn't mine the same or is mine a four? No. I thought you were using the four and I was using the five. There you go. Okay. You got, yeah. Because I bought you that for Christmas. My wife and I did. And uh, they were out of the five. So I got you the four or vice versa. But yeah, Natty ribbon mics. They're about 80 bucks. They're really, they sound really good. Um, Yeah. Yeah. They do. They do. Let's see. My mic is going into a multi-mix 8 USB mixer and into that I have another computer plugged in which has Skype on it which is for receiving phone calls with a Skype phone number which we gave out the number you can call from a regular phone you don't need a computer to call it um, and you and I are talking to each other on a third computer that is running a program called mumble and or a second computer that's using a program called mumble which is kind of like Skype, but better audio quality. And yeah. you have to buy a server, which rent a server, which is like four bucks a month for a 10 user server. It's used by gamers to like yell at each other from across the world while they're gaming. Right. That's and harass each other. Yeah. Harass each other in various ways. Uh, apparently gamers do that now. My 12th uh, level uh, wizard can beat up your 14th level paladin with my magic sword of summoning. I'm thinking a little bit more raunchy than that. Uh, you know, I've I've heard people Y'all getting racist on those things. You, man. Yeah, 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 more like that. That's what I'm thinking of. From from one mother's basement to another mother's basement yeah, around the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then that the audio output of my mixer goes into a splitter. One goes into the headphones. I'm not using my good sexy headphones because for some reason I had to run the power kind of hot out of it. So I had to use my cheapo. Skypey headphones that have a volume control on them. So I'm using those to monitor with. Um, it's got a little mic in front of me, but I'm not using that. I'm using the room mic. I just push it up out of the way. So, uh, and then the other output of that is a stereo eighth inch jack male to male, which is going into a third computer, which is running a program called But, B U T T, which stands for broadcast using this tool. Yes. Uh, but and Mumble are free soft, uh, <laughs> software that don't cost money. Um, sorry, Richard freeware. Stallman. Um, freeware, yeah, yeah. And the butt server is going into um Adam Curry's castle where he has his. Yes. You know, I think he bought. Didn't he buy? Our, I, I think our butt is going into his Sam. Yeah, Sam yeah. is uh, streaming audio masturbatory. Uh, I forget what it is. It's a. <laughs> it is a. Service to Amazon. It costs money. It's for uh, mm-hmm. Shoutcast serving which is serving to you, you wonderful folks, and uh, you 78 people, slowly dropping about one every five minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, wait, this isn't Adam Curry and John Dvorak, Dvorak, Dvorak. Who are these people talking about tranny hookers and shooting crocodile? What does this have to do with anything? Yeah. Well, we haven't talked about tranny hookers yet. Should we, should we get off no, on that we're tangent? Still doing our, we're still doing our... So <laughs> the butt, it's a form of technology. The butt server goes into Adam, Adam Curry's castle. Uh, and you know, I think, I think, I think he bought the Rolling Stones mobile studio, you know, won it in a card game and he's got that plugged in and, uh, and then he's got about 400, you know, little helper elves running around, plugging things in and running the generators, you know, feeding the antelopes that run on the generators. Okay. Okay. You're all into conjecture now. (laughs) Uh, do you have any more of your gear that you want to talk about? You're in Austin. He's in Austin. Go over and see him. That's true. I should go over and see him. Yeah. Well, don't stalk him. You know, we'll, we'll set it up. I'll set it up. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you'll get to um, see the castle. I want to know about the, the sex dungeon at Adam's house. The Gothic castle. The Gothic castle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our first. This was our first and last ever episode on No Agendas Global Radio. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, well, should I we give did, my gear rundown? We do, we do say in the description that um, there. I missed a comma. I was supposed to say we talk about sex, pets, and rock and roll. But you did said, sex pets. Sex pets. And DJ read it like that. And I kind of like it. We gotten several yeah. comments about it. Yeah. And, uh, Might as well keep it. We will talk about sex pets at some point. But um, yes. yeah, what's your gear rundown, DJ? Uh, uh, DJ Silencer? No. <laughs> Wait, I do I'm need DJ. a new DJ name, though. We need to come up with something. Wait, I, don't, I don't like DJ Subsonic anymore. No, I don't like it either. And I don't like the lyrical terrorist. Um, uh, yeah, I've stopped using that, too. Although I liked it for when it was. I mean, it was, you know, Macho Libertarian Flash. Or I guess it even wasn't, because, you know. It was Macho cons- Constitutionalist Flash. It was something. Macho... It was macho guy who's been called Bin Laden too many times because of his beard. There you go. Flash. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But I'm over it, so yeah. I'm not the lyrical terrorist anymore. Um, I really that, like, was an, that was an I, MC name. That wasn't a DJ name. I like I need your MC DJ I like, name. I like your uh, your partner, the guy you're doing some hip hop with, the uh, uh, Silver Stacks. That's a great Silver name Stacks. for a rapper yeah. or D or a, li- or a libertarian cut, rapper. Yeah, who yeah. who actually yeah. talks about the silver economy and precious metal hoarding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I need I need a new DJ name, so maybe we should have a fiend contest, a fiend test. How about Rich Black? DJ Rich Black. I'm. I just thought Rich Black things, would be so. a great name for a rapper, but you'd have to be black. Yeah. yeah. Rich well, there was black, Rich Man. There was Rich Boy. I mean, you. that's kind of close. Boy is so condescending, though, too. Yeah. 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 Boy. I mean, um, it's like you know, like that's what what racist whites used to call all black men, boy. And it's also like in the BDSM community, boy is a subby, a subby male, you know, submissive mm-hmm. male. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sex pets. See, we got there sex already. Pets. All right. Yeah. 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 I'm polishing anyway. my sex pet. So go ahead and talk about your. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got my uh, my ribbon mic, uh, and that's plugged in with a, an XLR to a quarter inch adapter into my Newmark DXM06 mixer which is actually a DJ mixer. Um, you can do a DJ battle with this mixer. That's the kind of mixer it is. It's got a, a very nice crossfader on it, although it is starting to bleed a little bit. I would replace it, but I'm going to replace my whole setup, so I'll probably just leave the crossfader be. Um, also into the Newmark, Newmark mixer, I've got um, another computer that uh, we might play audio off of one day if we can figure out how to do it without interrupting the simulcast. Uh, because that extra computer is also running an output to itself, so it can simulcast our feed uh, to our own streaming feed. So, so right now, did, you, how did you do it at the top of the show when you played our our ad? Our ad is on um, because it's a mixer. You know, it's got multiple channels. It's got a you mic channel. It on and it's CD, got, right? It's got two, yeah, two uh, line level inputs for two. You know, ideally two turntables or a turntable and a CDJ. A CDJ is like a turntable that plays a CD. Uh, they were really cool for a while, but now it's almost all old school because you can have uh, a MIDI controller that feels like vinyl. Um, that controls Serato and it's all self-contained, which is what I want to get next. But right now, I'm rocking the Stanton CDJ. I think it's called a C304. Uh, it controls the CD like vinyl, and you can also it has sample pads. You can sample it and chop it up and all sorts of cool stuff. But yeah, I just that's what I was playing the ads on. And if we go to break, I'll play music on it. Um, just have it at my it, fingertips. Do you, do you want to try it when we're done with your description and play something from it? Sure. Right now I have uh, some of your music from your old band, Bomb, queued up because we figured oh. that'd be nice introductory music. Not introductory, yeah. but you know, a nice little break bread while we go and get a drink or whatever and yeah, listen we to were, it. It's not uh, too abrasive. Michael's like, don't put any of that super abrasive hip hop. Uh, so not got until, his. Yeah, because not until we have our audience on here. Right, we have uh, right. 77 listeners right now. So instead we've got some old school. Um, these tracks you gave me, though, they're not like fast hardcore punk what would you call them they're kind of like mellow but have i don't balls, know i sent I you a bunch of stuff i would play that song uh the power of suggestion i think would be the one to play or you just let them play all through it but uh see what we oh. get you know uh bomb was signed to warner brothers but it was a little late for adam curry to get to interview uh introduce us on mtv unfortunately Oh, sorry. I was away from the mic. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? I was queuing up the song, man. You wanted that specific song. So we'll start with... Look, man, uh, let's get in a fight because conflict is the essence of drama, man. Yeah, yeah. Don't Screw talk to you, me like Michael. That. Screw hey, you. Hey, your mom. Screw you. My mom is dead. Play the oh. song. <laughs> she is. That was...
Yo, Nima Fien. You there, Nima Fien? What's up? Yeah, there? I'm here. Can I'm you hear there. me now? I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, someone said it sounded pretty good. It was a little bit of warbling. You know, the uh, MP3 to MP3. You know, you take an MP3 and then you uh, stream it to an MP3. And uh, yeah, so. But. It was warbly on our uh, streaming server. On our on, streaming server? On the No Agenda Radio streaming server. Uh, which yeah. means it's even more war- warbly on our rebroadcast on the Freedom Fiend streaming server. But yeah, hey, we're it, not a music show, man. Right. That's kind of hard to deal with. I mean, you know, we're in two different places and then the servers and I guess at another place. So things got to bounce around. Hey, a man, lot it's it's global. It's beautiful. It we're is. We're telecommuting I mean, it's, it's, to work. It's no agenda global radio. But yeah. uh, unfortunately, right now, we can lose some audio quality doing things like we just did. So that's all right. We're that's sorry, right. but um, sometimes we have to go uh, pee pee kitty and you know pee-pee get some kitty. vodka on ice pee-pee kitty I'm, I'm out of I'm, I'm out of whiskey so i've got some vodka on ice Pee-pee. we'll see how that goes Pee-pee. oh good we're, we're gonna, you're gonna be cussing like a sailor and telling me to go die by the end of this no <laughs> you said you said conflict was the essence of drama so i'm trying to increase the chance of, the, of it although i don't drink or do any drugs so like uh conflict with people who are drunk or on drugs seems really petty to me like they get uh stupider and angrier quicker seems like yeah yeah that's true. That's true. Although, yeah. I guess I'm never in a place where people screw with me if I'm intoxicated. You know, I'm usually yeah. with people I feel comfortable with, and and I'm a real laid back guy. So even if I am out partying on Sixth Street, it's very few times I get into any real trouble. I did. I did tackle my little brother at my graduation celebration on Sixth Street in front of a bunch of because Sixth Street, you know, it's the street in Austin that's always. It's full of bars. It's where people go to party. Um, and there's always tons of cops and cops standing around, cops on horseback, you know, all, all sorts of cops everywhere. And um, I just tackled Frank. I don't know why. I guess because he's my little brother. And, um, you know, I just tackled him as hard as I could on the concrete. And the cops, like, got angry at us and yelled at us and, like, broke us up like we were in a fight. I mean, I guess I could see that. And then I was, like, making fun of them. I don't remember what I said because I was drunk, but apparently I was yelling about how, how stupid they are and all sorts of other things. So <laughs> You were telling um, the truth and you got in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't write me a ticket. You know, I, There's been other times I've been drunk and angry at police and I did get in trouble. So. It'll be okay. Next time you're down on 6th Street and some cop's hassling you and you're you're about to get thrown in the cop car, Adam Curry is going to pull up in his limo and pull you into it. Right, right. Well, I'll tell the cops at the cop shops, now this is what's going to happen. You know, in about five minutes, you'll get a knock at the door. It'll be Adam Curry. <laughs> He's going to give you a letter, and it'll tell you to let me go. You're paraphrasing the movie um, Lord of War. That's pretty funny. Lord of War. Yes, I am. Good movie. Hmm. Good movie. Except for the uh, romantic subplot, which I could pretty much do without with in any Hollywood movie. Yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, the guy has to get the girl, right? It has to happen in every Hollywood movie. So Dalton just uh, paged in and said, uh, are you happy, Michael, after the song? And then he said, tell Nima, I said, be a man and take that vodka to the face at room temp. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I need something to sip. I'm not going to sit here and pour myself shots over and over again. I need I need a sip and drink. I, I never drink vodka like this. I always drink whiskey or something. Why don't you mix it with some syrup? No, I mean, Isn't it, vodka's the- already way too sweet. Like I'm drinking it now, and I'm like, man, it's so sticky sweet like yeah but isn't know. that the I, like dirty south thing to do is to like put codeine cough syrup in your liquor no 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 you, you don't mix you, them the, the codeine's sufficient enough man no you mix oh you mix it with you, soda pop huh yeah yeah you make it more syrupy less druggy yeah you, you mix it with uh sprite or or big red or root beer that's probably like the, the down version of the up version of the old uh you know like when they first sold coca-cola it had cocaine in it and it was uh-huh. a syrup you couldn't buy it in stores. You'd go to the the you know the malt shop, and the uh, the guy would mix it with some cold carbonated water. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like that. Except that you know, codeine cough syrup is already super syrupy. So. so if you could, I wonder if there are any, um, if out there extant, there are any caches of original Coca Cola with cocaine in it. Huh. I guess if it were in glass bottles, which it probably was at the time, it would still be still be good. I mean, I hear I hear tell there's a some documentary I saw about this this old guy who loved soda pop ever since he was a kid going to the soda shops. And so he had this this uh, 
emporium of various sodas from around the world and, and old school stuff that had been around forever and, uh, you know, stuff from decades ago. And he said, if it's still in the glass bottle, it's still good. You know, it doesn't go flat. It tastes the same. So maybe they are out there like, uh, like the anchovies in Futurama. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. I mean, do you think there are any like Mr. Burns type billionaires in their, in their cavernous mansions? You know, like, well, today I'm going to break out some 1903 Coca-Cola syrup. Coca-Cola cocaine. Formula. Yes, <laughs> Coca-Cola cocaine. If you mix that with some uh, with some coating cough syrup, that'd be like not the poor man's speedball. Poor man's speedball is a beer and a coffee. Uh, it would be the the ultra rich man's speedball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess if you're that rich, you probably just have a pile of Coke in a room. You have a Coke room. Do you know a soda called Drank? On. Yeah, Drank. It's like a melatonin they call it the anti. Rose. Right. It's the it's got a bunch of drink. It's got a bunch of hippie Valium in it, and they yeah. call it the anti-energy drink. Yeah, yeah. Valerian root. That's what I, uh, I take. Some like, the only drug I ever take is some well, aside from like nicotine, caffeine, and you know aspirin, ibuprofen. Occasionally, if I can't sleep and I have to be up for something, I take this thing called what I call hippie Valium, which is over the counter mixture of valerian root and melatonin or melatonin and uh it zonks me out and i sleep and i wake up kind of hung over so it's kind of a trade-off like it's really for when i have to be up and doing something in 12 hours and can't sleep and i'm not going to not when i'm going to be up in eight hours because if i take it eight hours before i have to be doing something uh i don't have enough time to get up and get off it and be sane and coherent and cogent Right, right. Well, I mean, it's like that way with most sleep aids. Like, I mean, they tell you that if you take the prescription ones or... Do not operate if, machinery or do a podcast on this substance. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even if you take NyQuil, I mean, you'll know... My, my wife likes to do that sometimes, take NyQuil just to go to sleep. Um, which, you know, I could say that and not feel guilty or like, you know, the feds are going to come get me because they advertise it that way now. Like, they have their what? own brand of NyQuil. Yeah. It's called like z or something. Uh, and it's it's really? just the it's just the active ingredient that makes you drowsy. I guess they've they've taken the Tylenol out of it and probably the dextromethorphan. Uh, and it's just that thing that's also in Benadryl that uh, makes you sleepy. Uh, but, of course, it's in a liquid form and it tastes like NyQuil. Yeah, it's say, called yeah, Benadryl. Help, helps, helps you get to sleep. The thing in Benadryl called Benadryl. Well, there's different Benadryls. Like Benadryl has a non-drowsy formula, and it's like See, Benadryl's I think, not, not I think the when, ph- pharmaceutical name. It's I think when you name. take something that is like worked for decades, based around one substance, and then you change that substance to satisfy some kind of nanny law, and rebrand it with the same name or variation it's awful. on it, yeah, it's yeah. awful. It's like. It's like well, Sudo, do you remember Sudafed? It's I mean, like Sudafed a, yeah, pisses me like, off more than anything else. It's like a band replacing their singer and using the same name. Ah, right, right. Which even lots of bands have the courtesy to not do that. Like Sublime is Sublime with Rome. <laughs> they have the other singer. Well, that's Sublime, still kind of like Sublime. the same thing. It's using the name with uh, a variation. But you know, people got to pay their bills, and I'd rather have them do it by playing ska music than by. Uh, throwing innocent people in cages, which is often the excuse for people who do that. Well, I got to feed my family, so I got to be a drug warrior. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's so ridiculous. square, man. So square. Yeah, I mean, the naming thing bugs me. Um, and, you know, Sudafed really bugs me, too. That, that's when, when you said, you know, when they ch- they have to change their formula because of some stupid nanny thing. Well, Sudafed had to do this, and this is old news, and everybody knows it, but it still gets my goat when I go to Walmart, and I have to go to the counter and ask for the Sudafed with Sudafedrin, you know, which it's named after, instead of that piece of crap you put in the over-the-counter stuff. Because the over-the-counter stuff does not work at all. Like, it's not even close. Yeah. I don't even think they should be allowed to still call it Sudafed. There ought to be a call law. It Sudafed suck E or something. There ought to be a law. No, there <laughs> yeah. shouldn't. There should be a free market. There should be. Um, yeah. Where'd you our, go, uh, well, our stream's been not playing. It My shockwave's been crashing. So I've been over here trying to get our simulcast working again. Well, our stream is working. The stream that uh, is going to the um, globalist radio, the global radio, sorry, the um, no agenda global radio, that's working. And I've got uh, my little helper elves here who are going to tell me if it stops working. Because the over-the-counter stuff does not work. Ah, you're cutting okay. in and out. You're cutting in and out, man. I yeah, I know, because I'm getting up to it. Uh, oh, you're listening? checking the server. Uh, yeah, give me one second here, actually. Talk for okay. a sentence or two. And now the end is near. Oh, wait, I don't want to sing that. I've seen the needle and the damage done. 
a little bit of it in everyone, but every chunk is like a setting soon. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Good. We are we are playing we are playing again. There was a about five or ten minutes there where our people listening to the fiends feed weren't hearing anything. We still got sixty eight listeners, which is pretty good. Uh, you know, like Adam's show has like seven hundred, and then he goes off the air and it starts cutting down to like five hundred within minutes, and uh, then it's still sixty eight. There's sixty eight. Well, there's probably eighteen of our fans, and probably seventy of the people who are listening earlier that we haven't chased off yet. We got to try harder. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, hopefully, as people get used to us. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's give them some good old fiends content. Then, do you want to do some tyranny today's or talk about philosophy? What do you want to do here? Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll I want to plug notes. Bad Quaker podcast. Oh yeah. Bad yeah. Quaker is uh is our friend Ben Stone does a podcast called the Bad Quaker podcast. It's badquaker dot com, and uh, it's pretty much the best Liberty Cast out there. I mean. You know, a lot of Liberty Cast, a lot of anarchist stuff, a lot of Tyranny Today stuff scares the crap out of me and gives me bad dreams. And Ben, uh, I listen to Ben after I'm scared from all the, 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 the news of the world. Yeah, Ben's great. Ben's like your friendly old uncle who knows, who's, who's old and wise and yeah. calm. And um, even and when he tells you the truth, even if it's a very scary truth somehow you feel more comfortable knowing it because you know it's the truth and you can, you feel like you can trust Ben. Um, you know, when I first heard Stefan Molyneux, I was like, wow, this is probably the best uh, speaker we have in the liberty movement. Um, and maybe that's true as far as speaking off the cuff. I, I don't know. But I think that Ben is probably the most consistent uh, and maybe the most honest when it comes to, to people I hear in the liberty movement. He's he's definitely up there. He's one of my faves. Yeah, but there's if if I had to be on a desert island with one, I'd be there with Ben. With Ben? Well, with his with his audio, with his MP3s <laughs> in in AUG format, so I could listen on my solar powered GNU slash Linux unit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm using a Mint Mint Linux Debian Mint Debian Linux. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I'll do a review yeah. at some point, but it's good, man. It's good. Yeah, I'm going to install it, too. Um, I was not a fan of Puppy. Uh, Puppy was annoying, yeah. but well, I'll, I'll, try, is, I'll try Debian. The we'll thing see. is, if you install Debian, you have to partition. I mean, really, what I would do is I would get a dedicated computer for it and just wipe it like I did. Um, if you try to, it is possible to like partition part of the Windows drive, but you're going to have to move stuff around because Windows craps all over the hard drive, and there's you know segments mm -hmm. of files everywhere on it. So... Uh, you know, including the like little back door they probably have for the central scrutinizer. Yeah, yeah, the back just, door just so they buy, can listen to our butt. Just buy a fifty dollar computer and uh, wipe it. Well, I mean, I've, I've got the extra computer that I'm simulcasting on, so I could use okay. that. I mean, well, that, that have, was the plan all along. Does it have two uh, two segments in the hard drive? <sighs> I thought even if they don't, you can you, you can, can do, do it really but easily. It's harder. It's yeah. harder. But there's yeah. nothing on there that you need. Other than Windows and the streaming utility, but right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just, then, just but and yeah. Google Chrome is yeah. the only thing I use on then, it. Yeah. Then you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is it easier to look up porn on Linux? No, but it's uh, <laughs> it's about the same. You're spied on less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, use, okay. we use Linux and we use a VPN. Uh, when we want, I basically I have a Linux computer for secure stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a VPN. Uh, virtual private network, uh, so I'm not using my IP. I have peer block. I have uh, uh, do private browsing, which doesn't save anything in Firefox. And uh, yeah, and I don't log into anything on that computer. You know. Okay. Okay. Which when that's, you log into something, you're being followed. So, right. You know. Right. I mean, that's why you log in, so they can track what your username did. Yeah. Not that that's always a bad thing. I mean, that's useful in a lot of situations. Yeah. I mean, I don't do anything that would get me in trouble for doing. It's just kind of like I don't really want some government goon hired off a pizza box sitting in front of a bank of computers knowing that I'm looking at, you know, um, Norwegian 
plump grandma porn. Uh, yeah. Well, everybody wants to be able to close the curtains every now and then, right? I mean, that's all it is. Yeah. All you're all you're doing is being private. You I mean, can't anymore, too. I mean, it's really it's kind of getting toward the 1984 uh, telescreen thing, you know. In what way? Is it's because if you're on the regular internet all day, every day, well, everywhere. Doing- I mean, there's drones watching you from above. There's cops on every corner. There's cameras. Uh, well, I live in Wyoming, so there's not a cop or a camera on every corner, which is part of why I live here. It's so low population that they haven't bothered wiring it all yet mm-hmm. as much as everywhere else. But, um, you know, you can't take a subway or a Greyhound bus without a TSA search now or chances. You can, of, but it, it does, it does happen. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and drones are going to get a lot worse. I mean, right now it, they're pretty rare over the American skies, but hey, let's give out the number, worse. man. Let's sorry. Let's give out the number. Yeah. It's a calling so, show. We haven't had a call yet. Oh yeah, we haven't. I forgot. Okay. Why don't you give it so call in show. It's three zero seven two one five five one seven one. If you want to call the fiends, just uh go ahead and pick up your phone and dial. Three zero seven two one five uh five one seven one. Um you can also check us out on Skype. Uh you can just dial that number from Skype or I think Michael's username is just uh Michael W. Dean. I'll confirm that. Once he gets back, you can also uh, email us at talkback um, at freedomfiends.com. Talkback at freedomfiends.com. And uh, I think eventually we're going to do something like a chat room here. Uh, this is our first show here on No Agenda Radio. Um, I, I think they made it available to us. So I think there's a chat room on Adam Curry's show. And we could just keep that open and uh, bring the chatters on to the new show and have our chatters come in too. So I think that's something that we will do here in the next few episodes. Um, and I think Michael's still out. So I will uh, guess I'll go off in another direction here. Yeah. Um, oh, you're back. You're I had to let my cat in, man. I forgot. I shut the back door. She couldn't get in. She was in the backyard screaming. Uh, not screaming uh, like I did anything wrong, just like, meh, human, right, let me right. in now so I can eat crunchy, yes. yummy food. Yeah, she wasn't screaming. She was giving you orders. Yeah. Wondering why they weren't being taken. I mean, basically, you know, my job description in life is cat doorman and anything else is just gravy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, huh. So, yeah. Um, do you want to go look at our notes and talk about stuff? I did uh, see this thing you were wondering about. If it could be used by the state to erase libertarian thoughts. Oh, did you um, say what it was? Yeah. Well, actually, it's just a, a study some researchers at a place called Uppsala University in Sweden did. Um, they wanted to check and see if they could keep – it's actually keeping pain memories from being imprinted, basically. Or, or – uh, in the article, they say, by displaying a photograph and, a, and simultaneously administering a small electric shock, the researchers were able to induce formation of a fear memory in test subjects. Then by showing half of the subjects the same photo without the shock repeatedly during the consolidation process, they were able to stop a sense of fear from being permanently associated with the picture. Actually, it's not really a way to erase memory, but it, it brought me off on another tangent that I thought was important. Um, the, the way they kept it from being a fear memory was they showed the same image over and over and over again to that normalize it. That reminds me it. of Clockwork Orange, man. The Levitico kind of. Levitico technique. But but Levitico. almost in almost in reverse though, because they they showed the the picture over and over again without the pain to make it a less painful memory or a non painful memory. And I was thinking that's exactly what the state does all the time. So it's not like the state's going to use this to erase libertarian thoughts, but that's that's the state's job. I mean, that's what your, your public school's job is, right? Your teachers wield authority over you and your peers constantly, and they act as if that way of doing it is the way. Like, there's no question about not being stomped on by the teacher and the principal and the assistant principal. It's just the way it is. You must do as you are ordered to do. Um, and it happens so often and so many times, and not just to you but to all your peers, that it becomes normal. Um, cops and soldiers as well. You know, they're always depicted as the heroes. They're the good guys. They're saving you from uh, people who want to destroy the world and the mad scientists and the dirty terrorists and the religious zealots. And they're always these good, great heroes. So when you see them, they want you to envision them as good, great heroes, even if they have hurt you in the past. And we call that horizontal enforcement. And a lot of that gets back to um, what what's called the great man theory. And Ben Quaker has gone... Ben Stone from Bad Quaker Podcast has done extensive talking and teaching about that. And 
I came up with a thought was that the, okay, the great man theory, first of all, is believing that a great man can save civilization and that, you know, a, a war, war hero or a president or a king is going to make everything right. I actually took it a step further and said, I think that should be called the great man logical fallacy or the great man fallacy. I think it deserves a place on that long list of logical fallacies. Yeah, I mean, a sub umbrella under appeal to authority. Cause that's and kind I'm of going what to spend it all is. my time hammering away at the world until that happens. <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, and I see what you're saying, but I think, too, this goes beyond just the great man. I think it's also... Uh, it's the religion of the state, right? Because it's not just always the great man. I mean, especially with cops and soldiers, a lot of times people think they're great, um, even if they're doing policies that the people don't like. Like they're like, oh well, they're just doing their job. It's it's Obama's fault that they're in these wars, or it's Bush's fault. You know, you can't blame the troops. You still got to support the troops. So I think that that can live. That mentality can live independent of you know loving your great man or believing. Yeah, in I your mean, great which man. was you know. Which was the the Nazi architect, the architects of the Nazi empire's excuse when taken to the Nuremberg trials? I was just following orders. Just I had to take care job. of my family. Mm -hmm. uh, right, and right. we've often talked about how we think at some point there may be Nuremberg type trials for the drug warriors. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, we're working on a song to that effect too. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess I hope in some sense that there that justice is served. I don't know if it looks like a Nuremberg trial looks. But, um, you know, if things are to get done right, if we are going to move into a stateless society or move towards it, anything like that, lib pair. Um, and Ben Stone says this as well. You know, you have to figure out how justice works. And I think part of figuring out how justice works is to figure out what you do to all the people that are war criminals right now. What do you do to all the people that are have blood on their hands because of their work with the state? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I think the question is important. And I think that's another big thing we do here on the Freedom Fiends is we don't – I want to remind you guys that we don't have the answer to everything. We're not here saying we've got the plan and you're going to follow it even though we call ourselves the Freedom Fiends agenda. We don't really have the agenda. Um, well, I think the agenda but, is educating but, people about the immorality of the state and how all – taxes are collected at the barrel of a gun and how all laws are enforced at the barrel of the gun. And by that we mean, exactly. you know, but, people say, but we need the government to fix things and they pass a law. And it's not a real law, it's a nanny law. It's you can't have a 72 ounce Coke in New York City, say. Um, if you break that law, if you walk around New York City with a 72 ounce Coke, a cop will eventually come up to you and say, I have to write you a ticket for that. And if you refuse and resist arrest, they will put a gun to your head and either kill you or put you in a cage. So all all laws are enforced at the barrel of a gun and with the threat of a cage. So yep. that's something most people don't realize. They don't see the gun under the pile of papers that is is a law. And without right, that gun, right. a law is just a suggestion. Right, right. But um, I guess what I meant to say is that doesn't mean we know how everything is going to work in lib pair. We're not, we're not trying to answer the question of uh, how the cotton will get picked after the slaves are freed. Um, we can give hypotheses, but that doesn't mean they're our plan. We're not trying to institute the, the libertarian central plan because there can be no such thing. Um, and, and a lot of statists dismiss libertarianism because or of market that. anarchy. Well, because, well, what's your solution? You know, kind of thing. Like everything's screwed up as it is now, but if you can't tell how one thing would work for sure, you know, how would the roads work? If 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 they don't, if you don't have a satisfying answer because you're not a you know, person trained in and experienced in, you know, road construction and planning, uh, they dismiss it. And they're like, oh, you don't know. But Stefan Molyneux said, that's like saying, well, I don't like slavery, but we got to keep slavery because without slavery, how would the cotton get picked? And, you know, how would things work in lib pair? That's not a reason to not work toward lib pair if you don't know yet. And it's, it's not saying, oh, I don't know. We don't have any ideas. It's basically like, we can't test these because the government fiend phone. won't let us. Fiend phone. We got a fiend phone. Call. Fiend, fiend phone. Fiend phone. Hello, fiend. You're on the air. Who is this? Hey, it's Dalton. Hey, Dalton. Where are you calling from and what's up? I'm calling from Ohio. Yeah. I dwell in the Rust Belt. Ohio's kind I just of want a to do, uh, nanny state, isn't now? it? Ohio's kind of a nanny state, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Eh, not as bad as others. I mean, 
Well, for example, open carry is allowed constitutionally. Open so carry of firearms, but but you'll still get a gun to your head for doing it in <laughs> some places. Yeah, you you do get bugged about it. <clears throat> like um, if you go up to Lakewood, which is a small town just outside of Cleveland, they actually have an ordinance uh, banning the carry of handguns, which technically is an illegal law because the Ohio Constitution overrides those kinds of laws, but they enforce it anyway. We actually, so, we actually, have know, a, we actually have a state. There. We actually have a state law in Wyoming that it's illegal for any town or county or area smaller than the state to pass any gun laws that are more restrictive than the state law. They really like guns here in Wyoming. I, that's part of why I'm here. And uh, yeah. open carry is such a non-issue that I stopped doing it because I was kind of doing it because I could, but kind of for shock value. Like, wow, you know, first six months I was here, I yeah. open carried, and now I'm just like. Pfft. Let's put it under, under my shirt, man. I noticed that it's gone, yeah. though. Now now that I'm in Texas, I mean, when I was in Wyoming, I could open carry. When I was in Washington, I could open carry. In Texas, it's illegal to open carry. It's illegal. Um, yeah, it's illegal. It's illegal. You, you cannot open carry in Texas, and I, I, I wish I could. Right. You know, Not that I would do it every day, but it feels just, just noticing that something's missing uh, can upset you. Nima, did you open carry yeah. in Washington? Uh, I did occasionally when I first moved to Washington. Um, I would open carry, and then I decided, you know, you got to wear so many clothes in the winter there because it was cold. I decided to end up getting my concealed carry permit. Uh, I was gonna probably just carry without the permit because I thought it was ridiculous. But um, in my wife, my my wife's job, she actually noticed a lot of people. Uh, you know, applying for jobs or applying for school that were former felons. And a lot of times the felonies were something as ridiculous as, you know, carrying without a permit. And then they're a felon and their life is ruined. So yeah, she and it, made and the pitch to go ahead and get the piece of paper anyway, and I did. And in Wyoming, um, you can now conceal carry a gun without a permit, uh, which in California would get, you, would get you a year in prison in California. But in, in California, weed's practically legal. And in Wyoming, a little bit of weed will get you a year in jail. So... So what's up, Dalton? In Ohio, there's a little bit of a, a gotcha law that comes with concealed carrying. It, it's it's a shell issue state, so that's not a big problem as long as you don't have a liberal sheriff in your county. But uh, if you ever have an interaction with a law enforcement official, you have to, the first words out of your mouth whenever they approach you have to be, I have a concealed handgun license and I'm armed. And if you don't say that, then you're now a felon. Most if they call you, oh, on most really? states most states are like that. It's not always a felony, but um, Wyoming, <laughs> it's specifically in the law that you don't have to alert the officer when you're pulled over that you have a gun. It's not a bad idea, although you know we've gotten pulled over concealed carrying. Um, we have permits too, but we've been pulled over concealed carrying while getting a traffic ticket, and we didn't bother telling him because we could tell he was just one of those like. You know, he was like a, a machine out there just giving out tyranny tickets. You know, like, here you go. Okay. Revenue on your way. generator. Here you go. On your way. Here you go. Yeah. On your way. Right. Uh, right. Another yeah. time we got pulled over for speeding, and I had a snub nose revolver in the glove box, which was open right in front of me, and my wife was driving. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he said, hey, see your license registration, please. My wife handed him the license. And I said, uh, officer, before I reach into the glove box to get my to get the re registration, I wanted to point out that, and he politely interrupted me and said, yeah, I see the gun, just please give me the registration. He looked at it, he ran it, he came back, and he said, oh, I'm not gonna give you a ticket today, but you were speeding, and it's a really nice day, and I'd hate to see you get in an accident, so uh, please be more careful. It was mind-blowing. Like the same month in California, my stepson got like thrown to the ground by cops and got guns to his head for 45 minutes for legally having some ammo in his car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of cop interaction would not happen in Austin, Texas. Um, I watched a, a Masada Ayub video, and he said what you should do in general is... I watched that one, too. It's like him playing a cop. Right, right. It was, I, I, I found it to be news you could use. I yeah. mean, hand the cop your... When you hand him your, your license, permit. also hand him your gun permit. Your permission and say, slip. Yeah, your permission Shut slip. Shut up, say, slaves. I, Dance, I am slaves. Dance, and, and, slaves. <laughs> The other important thing, though, was um, don't say gun. Say, um, officer, I'm licensed firearm. to carry, and I have it on me now. Do you, uh, would you? Say, he said to say firearm, didn't he? No, he didn't. He said I have it on me oh. now. Um, because if you if you give him the permit, say I'm licensed to carry, I have it on me now. Massad says, you know, um, you don't want that rookie 
who's coming up on the passenger side with the open window to just to hear, hear the word gun. gun. Yeah, exactly. And then pull out his piece yeah. and and let a few slip. Well, Mossad used to be a cop. Um, yep. He's also an Arab, which is uh, there's not a lot. Of, you know, they, they think, think most people think of the gun world as like cranky white dudes. But uh, yeah, he's a he's Arab and a former police officer. Um, I read a lot of Ayub Masad Ayub's books when he first, when I first got into guns. Um, I don't like reading them anymore because I don't really like taking advice from a cop. It's his stuff's good, but it's so stated. <laughs> I don't want man. cops to tell me what to do yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, why don't you play the ad for the gun training DVD? Do you want to play the ad? Or yeah, then we'll come back to the phone call. Okay, you cool with that, Dalton? Yeah, I'm good. All right, all right. Let's see. This is for a DVD I had come out yesterday called Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle. Let me know when you got it queued up there, Nima. Oh, uh, a- after that, I want to I wanna tell you about a mumble server that you can use that you don't have to pay for real quick. Okay. I paid a year in I, advance. I'll give you I already I'll, paid. Yeah, I'll give you the details off air, but I already yeah. paid a year in advance, but all right. Uh-oh. I'm gonna fade that okay. I'm gonna fade the ad up here, guys. Alright, I'm fading Dalton down. Gun training with the non aggression principle, volume one. Basic handgun and rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy-to-understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dalton, you still there? Dalton. Dalton oh. hung up. I guess Dalton he was offended. Nah, he probably got knocked offline because we're not using a GNU Linux computer. Oh, but we need to know he, he's got a mumble server for us. He wants to save us money. He's got I good know. news. We can save well, money on our mumble server. Yeah. He could call back or he could message me call on back, the Facebook. Message, email, talk back. Dozens of ways. Or at least yeah. So there's another logical fallacy I want to talk about. It's called Golden Age Thinking which is not ah, usually in the yes. list of fallacies, but it's uh, kind of the thesis of the movie, the Woody Allen movie, Midnight in Paris. Okay. And it's about a guy who's a writer, and he and his kind of snippy wife are in Paris visiting for a couple weeks, and they, they're they hanging out with an American friend of theirs who lives there, and he's, uh, he's basically saying, uh, he's talking about golden age thinking. He's like, you know, it's the erroneous notion that a different time period is better than the one one's living in. And, uh, I kind of think, and then the the whole movie goes on to like the writer is having these kind of waking dreams where he's going out at night, actually going out at night, walking around Paris. Fiend phone, fiend phone, fiend phone, fiend phone. Hang on a sec, Dalton. I'll get you on here in a minute. And he's actually believing that he's uh, hanging out with, um, you know, Hemingway and Picasso in the 20s mm-hmm. in Paris. And he he has magic, uh, golden age thinking. And I think that there's a lot of um, political oriented people who have golden age thinking. I think a lot of Americans, a lot of Republicans are like, we got to go back to the golden age of, you know, when slaves, when, when there was segregation <laughs> and low taxes. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Remember when government. certain folk weren't allowed on golf courses? Yeah, Fodge, and, you know, you know, I think a lot of Democrats are like, want to go back to the golden age of Bill Clinton being... Of FDR. Bill Clinton being the bomb dropper, not uh, uh, Obama yeah. having to fight with a bunch of Republicans about bomb dropping. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, when I tend to think of golden age thinking, I tend to think of constitutionalists or right-wingers, people like that. But um, you're right. If you talk to liberals, they're like, you know, all about the Clinton era. They're like, don't you remember the Clinton yeah. era? And everybody oh, and had a bunch of money. He's out and stumping for Obama right now. And we had a bunch really, of money. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people would say that that's, that was like... Uh, fallout from the Reagan years, and it just took a while. You know, that's what the Republicans. No, it was anyway, a freaking bubble. It was the it was green, bubble. It was it was no even before that. It was Greenspan uh, pumping yeah. up a bubble. You know, the, the the prosperity was fake. It's not like Bill Clinton, you know, bestowed his genius planning amongst us, and we all made more money. No, no, the, the Federal Reserve was screwing everything up. It was all misallocation. Dalton, what do you think? Well, I I think part of the trick was. With economic policies that the government enacts 
it, there's actually two tricks. Is one, people think that it's all the president's fault, which isn't true. And two, a lot of these things take a couple years to really get rolling. You yeah. know, the, mm-hmm. the housing bubble that got started back, you know, around the Clinton area and maybe probably a little bit before that didn't really explode until, you know, 08 when those guys were long gone. So it's right. not really accurate to say that X or Y was solely Clinton's or Obama's or Bush's fault. It's a, it's a long series of usurpations and abuses to borrow some words from someone. Nice. That's a really good point, yeah. And sometimes it's so convoluted, the government it exerts uh, pressure or force on so many different ways. Sometimes it's hard to track which horrible policy ended up causing it. You know, it's sort of the cluster yeah. track of it all. I like to call it the anti-responsibility vortex. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah, because yeah. at, at a certain point, there's absolutely no way you can figure out who's actually who up. to blame for any one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they love that. I would argue that that's probably by design. You know, nobody wants to oh, take yeah, credit yeah. for the for the failure at all. So they they make sure to to pad themselves behind layers and layers of blame. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, we needed to get something from you, Dalton. Uh, the Mumble server. You wanted to tell us about a Mumble server that we don't have to pay for. Yeah, it, it's actually the same server that I'm going to use with you guys when we podcast later on uh, oh, next cat. week. But uh, cat. a like friend that. of mine has the server that's actually running with a, a hosting company that a guy he knows. So it's like a guy of a guy of a, that I know that he knows that we're friends with. Anyway, he's got practically unlimited bandwidth on there because it's a hosting company. And um, huh. he, uh, he lets us run Decline to State on it for free. And I'm sure he lets you guys use it for free, too. So, that would be amazing, yeah. Especially um, if it has bandwidth, I wonder if that would mean that we would sound better if if we would get rid of, you know, glitching and dropping packets. Yeah, I might help a little bit. You'd you'd have some higher throughput, of course. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, the slowest link in the chain is what limits all of it. So I don't know right. what you what your guys' bandwidth is like, but you wouldn't have to worry about it server side. Well, we'll uh, we'll see when we do the live show with you and see how it sounds. Um, I'm actually, I really, we really appreciate it, but I'm not in a hurry to dump what we have if it doesn't sound better. Um, you oh know, yeah, I know. That's I pay, fine. I just figured I pay, I'd throw it out there because you I, know why pay money for something you don't need to is basically well, my logic. Well, I, 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 I paid I paid a year in advance, so um, yeah, I paid I hear for you. it and. I also kind of like with things like that. I kind of tend to more pay for them. The things that, the things that are really helpful as favors for us are things. And, and I don't mean I'm not trying to sound like, eh, but I'm just explaining like what <laughs> what we need for the freedom fiends. Like, I like people to do favors instead of like something we're dependent on. Like, um, there's a guy putting all our stuff up on BitTorrent. That's incredibly helpful. But if he missed it for a week yeah. or stopped doing it, we'd find someone else to do it. If uh, we got someone putting all our episodes up on YouTube, same deal there. But you know, if it's something that is in an absolutely in in permeable needed link of what we do, I kind of would rather just pay for it than trust it to a friend of a friend who's like, "Yeah, I guess we'll let you do it." You know. Well, we don't right. like to do yeah. business on the that. air, but but Michael, if it is already, we've already got ours already paid for. So if we tried theirs and it did sound That's better. That's what I'm saying wouldn't be any sweat off of our back to go or if right. it did not sound better it wouldn't be any sweat to go back to our normal the, one. I guess what I'm saying is the only reason I and I don't mind talking about business like this in the air cuz you know we're we're transparent unlike Obama who thinks that <laughs> transparency means um you know jailing whistleblowers and but giving away the source code of the HTML on the on the White House website yeah, which he actually yeah. did and said transparency, transparency for Obama means doing a commercial with Harold and Kumar <laughs> and then still busting people for weed yeah yeah yeah, the but glass no. left over after a drone strike is transparent. Yeah, ah. <laughs> the what after a ground strike? The the glass, glass. left over after a drone strike. Yeah, does it? Does it turn the ground funny. to glass? Yeah, I imagine it get hot enough to turn dirt and sand in the glass. Ugh. What a world, man! A little bit of black comedy, I guess. Yeah, when I was a kid, we were promised flying cars, but somebody spent the budget on drones. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty yeah, close, I, I, though. They are. They're Maybe flying robots. Maybe it would be kind of like twisted metal, but in the future, and it will be flying cars be instead of art. normal cars. Yeah, CIA is making abstract art out of people. Uh, that's <laughs> <gross>. <laughs> you know that's worse in- than the glass comment. You know what's interesting? I was thinking about on older 
on older shows like from six or eight or months or a year ago I used to bitch at Nima for talking about non-politics stuff too much like when he brought up e-cigs and now I'm like uh, I don't yeah, want to talk about yeah. politics at all I want to talk about anything but politics oh I feel you there man that, that's one of the reasons why I love listening to you guys is because sometimes you talk about politics but then you take the issue behind it like Usually it comes down to, well, what's really the principle behind this? And then you guys talk yeah. about that. Or you just talk about hilarious stuff. Like butt so politics. You, you, we talk about butt You guys help me stay sane when I'm at work. Cool. We talk about butt politics. Those are important sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who gets butt when? That's yeah. the definition we, of butt politics. Right, I'll, read a, I'll read a letter from a fiend here. Someone said, hey, I listened to the casts for eight hours straight at work tonight. You guys are awesome. You make me laugh. And thanks for aiding in my journey from complete indoctrination state complete indoctrinated statist to freedom. Yay. Well, Hi, let's yay. let let's let Dalton plug his own stuff since he's on here and we just plugged ourselves. Yeah. And we're gonna be on a show with Dalton soon. So plug that and yourself, Dalton. Oh, okay. Sure. Um oh well, hold on a second. Sorry, yeah. did, um, didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Yeah, <laughs> No, I, I almost got in a car wreck. <laughs> Don't oh. mind me. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm one of the hosts with Decline to State, which is a podcast that myself and some other guys I know on the social networking site Reddit started up. Um, hey. We podcast twice a week. Um, we've had a, a couple of really high-powered guests on lately, which is pretty I cool. Too. Most recently, we aired an interview with Walter Block. If you want to check it out, you can go to declinefm.com. We have archives, a blog, and you can also listen live when we're broadcasting live from there. And you can also call in. You just have to contact the Skype user, decline to state. It's all one word. What did you guys talk to uh, Walter Block about? Or what did he talk to you about, I guess? Um, we, uh, we talked about how hurricanes are the government's fault. We talked <laughs> about his new Ron Paul love letter book a little bit. <laughs> and uh, just a couple other things related to that. Um, okay. I, and we talked about Defending the Indefendable. He has a, a Defending the Indefendable 2 coming out soon, and he's also got number three of that in the works. And uh, we also had him do what we like to call Bizarro Mode, which was we asked the guest to be like kind of like their evil clone and oh, nice. argue nice. against something that they hold dear as a position in real life, which was really okay. interesting. He took an argument that Rothbard made and kind of twisted it around. So it was really interesting. That sounds like a fun segment. I like that a lot. We might steal that. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, my did, favorite one was when Jeffrey Tucker was pro IP for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to hear the archive of that. Uh, you, got, you got all your yeah, archives up, up on the website? Yeah, there's a link on the left side there that says archives. Okay, okay. sweet, sweet. Um, did you give yeah. uh, or did you ask Walter about any of the flack that Ben's given him or other people in the Liberty Movement have given him about being, I guess, so so on board with the political process vis-a-vis -vis Ron Paul as being the savior yeah. of mankind? We did touch on that very lightly, but we really didn't go into it because we only had a half hour with him. Okay. And uh, I, I would have liked to have gone into it, but I kind of we kind of just like to let the conversation be natural and not you know beat the guests over the head with our list of questions. So right, right, right. Yeah. That's that's part of the luxury of podcasting is you can really do that. You know, in short shorter media, I mean, thirty <laughs> minutes. It sounds like oh yeah, that's short for podcasting, but you know, in news, that's a whole news show. So uh, yeah, you know, definitely definitely good to be more freeform. You, you, podcasting allows you to do that. Sweet, great. Right. And we're going to be on your show, was it mid-October or early October? Next week, October 3rd, 10 p.m. Oh Eastern Standard Time. Next week. I'm glad I found that out. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I thought Michael told you. <laughs> he did. He did. It's in an email somewhere. Oh, okay. I, did not, I, I didn't write it down on the calendar It's on yet. my calendar, man. I'm okay. on top of these things. I'm, he, I'm friends he with is... him on Facebook, but I, I tried looking for you, but I didn't find you. Are you on Facebook? Oh, yeah. Maybe I, I yeah, I'm on Facebook. for you the wrong way. Oh, okay. Maybe spell, oh, maybe spell my name again. wrong. Okay. Um, Probably I did. Yeah, if, if I see something, usually if I see something and it says, you know, the next month, I don't look at it until the end of the month. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I have, oh, I have to okay. October to worry about that. So I saw that it was October and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll worry about it later. That's why, that's why Michael's yeah. so important to the process. 
Yeah. If you guys want to show up, uh, like, anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour early so we can make sure everything's working good, that's 15. Great. We'll do 15. Okay. That's, yeah. that's cool. That sounds good. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. We'll great. send us the mumble stuff the day before. And um, thanks for calling in, man. It's been good. Yeah, no problem. I'll get off the line so someone else can call in. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Happy podcatting. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Podcatting, that's another fiend Podcatting. Word. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so someone was saying that the caller was too loud and sounded scratchy, so I turned the turned that down. We'll see how the next caller goes. Uh, okay. You're going to have to take another really, picture of your can't, mixer. Can't, yeah, I did. I deleted the other ones. <laughs> I was stealing time from the fiends. But uh, we are here on the Freedom Fiends Agenda live on September 27th. Have another 20, Have another 20 minutes of the cast here. If you'd like to call in. The call-in number is 307-215-5171. That's 307-215-5171. Or Skype yeah, yeah, yeah. to username kittyfeet1. Although yeah. our time is shortly coming to an end, isn't it? I'm so glad we had this time together. <laughs> he said, uh, someone said that the, um, the fiend phone, fiend phone is way too loud. I think we've heard that comment before. I think I'm, and basically what I did was I replaced the, uh, the Skype ring. It's a little wave file. Yeah. I replaced it with my own wave file, but I'm just going to lower the volume on that wave file after the, the show. Wave. So okay. the next time. So someone Although wants to call I, in. I, I think you had, did you have your mixer up too high and then you turned it down because it was really loud at first, but then the caller wasn't as loud as Fiend Phone? Or did I you turned, not? Play I with turned him down and he's on you the same, okay. same channel as the Fiend Phone. Yeah, Fiend exactly. Phone. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's just the output from Skype that that channel is, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's everything that you hear from Skype. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. We got about. I, I'm I'm asking now. We've got about 20 minutes left, right? We end up. Yep. I want to talk about this thing you Central. sent me about the Wikipedia entry for the Stockholm syndrome. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's uh, talk about that. People may or may not know. I'm a um, enthusiast of BDSM. You know, kinky sex. My wife and I have a 24/7 dom sub relationship, which uh, is not abusive. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. She's she's happy. Very happy. I'm very happy. Um, but you know. She likes likes it when I kind of tell her what to do. And, you know, there's a little bit of slap and tickle involved. We'll just leave it at that without getting too graphic. But I am also a protector of BDSM. Uh, there is so much BS out there. You know, like Hollywood always associates it with serial killers and rapists, rapists and torturers. And whenever I see someone just degenerating it without understanding it, I mean, it's kind of like, BDSM is is socially now I think where homosexuality was in the 50s where you know like a few a few hip people who don't practice it understand that it's okay and it's voluntary and then other people even people in the liberty movement like I've taken Stefan Molyneux and Adam Kokesh to uh, task for this and educated them about them just saying ridiculous crap about it you know mainly and Stefan oh, definitely learned from you and yeah. I, I like to think Adam did too at the end there once he was done you yeah. know Beating his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Ata. Ata. Yeah. But um, we don't have sound effects board not yet, yet, so we're we just will. make it ourselves. We'll work it out. Yeah. Yeah. This was kind of a trial run we've, today. We've got we've got the hardware, but I didn't have enough time to load the samples. Yeah, you just got to load it all up onto a an iPod or something. But I'm gonna load it into the MPC and bang it out. So anyway, uh, BDSM. Yeah, a lot of people say ridiculous crap. Like, well, that means that you must have had a bad childhood. Or, which is false, or, and you know, really everyone's had a bad childhood. I mean, Ben Stone from Bad Quaker Podcast pointed that out about this whole scenario. It's like, and he's not a practitioner of BDSM, but he is, he has no patience for people talking BS without knowing what they're talking about and just spewing logical fallacies, especially when they're people whose whole shtick, you know, like Adam Kokesh and Stefan Molyneux, their whole shtick or their whole thing their whole livelihood and purpose in life is based on exposing lies and educating people. And they do really well with that in the Liberty stuff. But, you know, I guess I'm like a BDSM um, lobbyist, you know, like the gays have a lot of lobbyists. Like, you know, anytime someone denigrates anything, anyone for being gay in any way or says anything ridiculous, like, well, you must have an unhappy childhood or you wouldn't be gay. I mean, there's a thousand people writing a letter and calling and complaining. So, I'm it. I'm it for the liberty movement. But you pointed out to me that the Wikipedia entry for Stockholm syndrome, 
which is the psych- defined as the psychological phenomena in which hostages express empathy and have positive feelings towards their captors, which we've expanded into status have Stockholm syndrome with the state. Right, right. Which well, is accurate. Also, it's been a meme on Facebook lately. You've seen that it says Stockholm syndrome, and one of the O's is the Obama O, and one of the R's is the Romney R. Ah, um, I've missed and that. And so some, somebody had posted this this wiki entry and was like, you know, you guys should talk about this. And we have talked about, you know, we've made uh, that parallel I think parallel we started before. that. I think that, um, uh, you know, I think that, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if we did start it, but we d- I do remember saying it before I read it somewhere else. I don't know if that means we started it or what. Uh, yeah. We did say it early on. Um, we haven't talked about it a lot lately, but maybe it is time to revisit. Uh, yeah. And the wiki entry, you know, I read the whole thing until until the bondage stuff. I was like, wow, this is right on. This is kind of like exactly what we say because uh, they also drew a parallel to um, military battered, training. Military training, yeah, military basic and training. Battered and battered wife uh, syndrome. And in the same paragraph, right. they say, battered wife syndrome is an example of act act of activating the capture bonding psychological mechanism as our military basic training fraternity bonding by hazing i agree 110 percent so far and sex practices sex practices such as sadomasochism and bondage slash discipline and there's there's three citations on that bdsm part and this would be really hard to argue on Wikipedia because one of them is from like the American Psycho- Psychiatric Institute and one of them is from a government website, a .gov website. So it's Plus like the wiki editors don't like you in the first place. They hate me. They took I was I had a wiki page for like 6 years and then they just took me off and said I wasn't notable. But uh screw them. But yeah, I love Wikipedia. And you know, Wikipedia, I actually read an article recently about um Wikipedia's um uh, has some uh, influence of libertarians uh, Hayek and uh, our programmer friend Eric S. Raymond. As an undergraduate, Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales had read Friedrich Hayek's 1945 Free Market Manifesto, The Use of Knowledge in Society, which argues that a person's knowledge is defined by, is by definition partial, blah, 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 basically, and then like the book The Cathedral of the Bazaar by Eric S. Raymond. So those two cats influenced him, and the licensing of all material on Wikipedia is GNU license, you know, uh, Richard mm-hmm. Stallman's license. So all that had an influence, you know, free market libertarians and Linux, GNU slash Linux programming had an influence on Wikipedia as well as a million other things. But yeah. back to the problem of well, Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an excellent example of the benefits of being open source, right? I yeah. mean, in his early days, people were like, oh, you're going to trust Wikipedia? What? Anybody can write on it. And now it's like, yeah, you should go to Wikipedia because anybody can write on it. You know, not one person can share their BS because somebody will call them on it. Yeah, there was actually a um, an essay by a really respected hacker called The Problem with Wikipedia. I'm trying to remember the name of the guy who did it. He did a great... Um, He's only done one movie, but he did a movie about um, uh, BBSs. Yeah, but um, God, what's his name? It's escaping me. But his it was basically saying that like, you know, he was an early adopter of Wikipedia, and he started dozens of pages on there and made useful edits on hundreds of pages. But he said that um, Scott, his last name is Scott. What is his name? Um, anyway, he uh, he said that the problem with Wikipedia is that he'd gone from being a um, content creator to a content defender because he, mm-hmm. he would work really hard for days researching and improving an article and sourcing it and then you know 14 year old Billy in his mother's basement would come by and go F you man and delete it and then he'd mm-hmm. have to put it back and then the kid would delete it again and then he'd put mm-hmm. it back and then some other kid would delete it I'm not being ageist I'm just assuming that it's 14 year old kids named Billy in their mother's padded rec room basement but right, right. Yeah, so that's the problem with Wikipedia. God, what is that hacker's name, man? Something Scott. But they, uh, I mean, they've addressed those issues, right? Don't you have to? You have to have an account now, and you can get flagged yeah. for maliciously Jason, editing posts. Jason Scott. Jason Scott. That's his name. The Great Failure of Wikipedia by Jason Scott. Maybe yeah, I'll link yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. Well, at any rate, we we got off on a little tangent there. I, I think we were going to talk about BDSM. <laughs> and its relationship to Stockholm, which syndrome. I was really mad about a minute ago, but yeah. now I forgot. Um, well, I mean, do you feel there's any truth to that? Because no. not at all, not even no. in the, um, I mean, in the mental mechanism that no that more in the sense that you could pleasure. say 
No more in the sense that you could say uh, marriage is an example of Stockholm syndrome because a very small percentage mm-hmm. of married people, you know, feel abuse trapped. their wives and treat them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I mean, and they qualified it with marriage. They said battered wife syndrome, which is an example of Stockholm syndrome. Right. But this was saying of, of BDSM, basically, like if you'd said marriage is an example of Stockholm syndrome, which, you know, there are some uber feminists who would agree that marriage is Stockholm syndrome, but right, I right, don't take right. them seriously. So what if what if they would have qualified it Fuck and those bitches. Oops. with something as simple as saying and sex practices such as some forms of sadomasochism or some forms of bondage discipline? Would, would yeah. a simple edit like that fix it in your brain or um, does that still not cut it? I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. You're going to edit the Wikipedia post live on air? Yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it so, exciting, folks? You talk while I do this. Look at God Michael. damn it. Anthony Editing Bichard is sending me... Anthony Bichard's <laughs> trying to get me to vote. He's sending me stuff. Vote, man. Talk about Anthony Bichard while I edit this. Should I talk about Anthony Bouchard or voting? I mean, well, okay, we'll talk about both. Um, Anthony is sort of a, a friend of ours. He's in Wyoming. He runs, I think, the Wyoming Examiner. He also does a lot of fighting for gun carriers' rights. Um, but oh, most, if not all, I believe, of his fighting uh, for gun owners' rights is within the status system. So he works behind the scenes. He, he spends a lot of time in Cheyenne, which is the capital of Wyoming, um, doing lobbying, basically. In fact, um, you know, uh, making sure that the, the bills that get crafted are okay for people who own guns uh, and calling out people. He does a lot of journalistic work, too, investigative stuff, you know, uh, in, in towns that seem to be anti-gun city councils that are doing bad things, like in Gillette. Uh, he's exposed some of that. Um, so kudos to him, but um, I think he is a fatal minarchist. You know, unfortunately, I don't think he's taken that leap and doesn't really understand fully that you can't embrace the non-aggression principle at the same time you embrace anything resembling a state. As, as long as there's any forms of aggression on the part of the state, uh, you're violating the NAP. Um, I don't even know if he cares that much about non-aggression principle or, or what his exact philosophy is. Um, so he does a lot of good work, but at the same time, it's unfortunate. As you can see now, he's trying to get somebody like Michael Dean, a now avowed anarchist, to take time out of his busy schedule of uh, preaching to the libertarians and anarchists out there and, um, and battling in the battle of ideas uh, in order to go do something as mundane and useless as voting. Um, I say mundane and useless because... You know, if voting changed, if voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. To quote the old saying, "There's really nothing, as far as within the system, you can do to change it. The powers that be already have that that shit on lock, so to speak. There's there's not much you can do. Um, even if you spent, you know, years and poured all of your effort and work into it, um, you know, for an example, look at the Ron Paul campaign." You know, sound ideas, pe- things people could agree on, some things as basic as the Bill of Rights. People just couldn't go for it, you know. And 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 where they did go for it, their votes didn't get counted. They got turned away. Uh, the primaries got shut down. Um, to me, voting is a wasted effort. And also, um, you know, campaigning, donating money to politicians, uh, it's all not only wasted and useless, but also, uh, if you do listen to Ben Stone, you would know that. Um, Whatever they do, they are, in essence, also violating the non-aggression principle. Just being inside of the congressional hall, using the microphone. Having the lights on. Having the lights on. Those lights were paid for by stolen money, money they stole from you. Uh, So when you vote for somebody, you're saying, hey, yeah, I give you my blessing to go sit in this lavish office uh, funded by, by the sweat of my brow involuntarily. Um, so no, uh, voting is is not something that we do or cosign. Uh, I think in other casts we've said before, um, we've called it the the suggestion box on the plantation. Um, <laughs> you're gonna get whipped, you know, if you write something mean in Shut it. Shut up, and, slaves! And if you write something that's actually valid, it's gonna get ignored. So yeah, uh, there's there's no point to it. Um, Anyway, don't mean to rag on you too hard there, Anthony. I, um, you do some good th- things, but uh, well, don't Anthony, ask us to vote because you'll get a response. Based, like Anthony's this. a really great lobbyist. He got 
he he basically was was he, the last the Wyoming's person. Firearm Freedom Act, which was a very yeah. very awesome law. Um, he also you know, I, I don't permit list concealed carry push through. Yep, yep. So he's done he's done some great work, and I don't want to take away from him for that. But uh, you know, I, I I don't know. What do you think, Michael? Do you think do you think how do you well, how do you feel about this, Anthony? I, I guess think is what this, I'm trying to uh, ask. I don't know. Yeah, I think this ties back into Stockholm syndrome. Uh, people who think they can change the state to change things and use voting, uh, like like the battered wife tr- trying to yeah. help the husband change. You know, yeah. he just needs to <laughs> stop drinking and it'll be fine. And speaking of Stockholm syndrome, um, I'm going to read this different this improved paragraph now on the Stockholm syndrome Wikipedia entry. It says, "Battered wife syndrome is an example of activating the capture bonding psychological mechanism as our military basic training fraternity bonding by hazing." And some small percentage of instances of sex practices such as sadism, masochism, or bondage discipline. Okay. And okay. the note I made um, of why I edited it was uh, – God, I can't even find it. How do you do that on here? Um, basically, it was something like uh, – was was what was originally posted by the Wikipedia contributor on here was an overly broad interpretation of the material they sourced. Read the material okay. he sourced. You know, it doesn't say that. Okay. Okay. Good. Which I I didn't read it. I just said that. I scanned it. <laughs> it was a bunch of government crap. But you know. Yeah. 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 All right. Hey, that's a freedom fix. Yeah. I fixed freedom. In, 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 insert bump here. Freedom fix. We have a freedom fix bump. But, you have the um, bump. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I do, but it would take me a few yeah. seconds to. You got to get to where it's like, like Adam, Adam and John. I, I, I will. Like I said, I'm gonna map all those on the NPC. So I just tap the touchpad and it's there. Yeah, yeah. It's we're not there yet. I mean, it's the first show, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll have fun morning zoo crew sound effects and goofy stuff uh, that we'll use ironically because we're hipsters <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yep. We're not we're not quite as as pro as as the with the sound effects yet. We usually yeah, do stuff yeah. in post. We only started doing a live show about 6 months ago on Liberty Radio Network, which we're still doing on Sundays. We should probably pimp the fiends and tell where people can find things. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to freedomfiends.com, this is the we we are the Freedom Fiends agenda. That's the name of this live show on No Agenda Global Radio. Um Freedom Fiends is our podcast and our collection of shows and our website. It's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com, which would be uh Foxtrot, Romeo, Echo, Echo, November. No wait, that's Fiends. Uh, anyway, I gotta get that stuff down better. Should I try? Should I try Nima? No nah, man. It's okay. Freedom, Freedom Fiends. That's all you need to dot know. com. You'll find it. Yeah. Call it's not me. Fiend. It's we've, Fiend, F E right. F E E N, right? Or just search our names: Michael W. Dean, Nima Vidati. Um, we Fox both come Trot, up when Echo, you, when you do Echo, those. November. Yeah, man, and we've got a, We've got a good Google presence, so you search Freedom Fiends, you'll find it. You'll find it. Don't worry. Um, yeah, and you can also it. listen to us on LRN dot FM. Uh, they play. They rebroadcast our podcast, and they'll. Uh, do they replay the live show too? Yeah. We have I mean, two slots the live show. And they'll be and playing three now. Um, I think that this one will probably get lumped in with uh, whatever is most recent. This will replace the Wednesday one because the Sunday one's separate and recorded there. Okay. So, okay. so yeah, we got um, a live show on Sunday on Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. It's Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. East Coast time. Same calling number as this show. We got this show on here, which is going to be Thursdays. I don't know yet if it's going to be 3 or 3.30. I was told 3, and we were on at 3, ready to go, and... Sat here, uh, wait until 3.30. I think there's a miscommunication, and I don't yeah. know what happened, but we'll have it sorted out by next week. Yeah. Let me shut my window. The wind's waking up here. Um, and then we got the Wednesday non-live show, which we put out usually Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. Yep, yep. And we got a blog, too. We got a blog that's got about 12 really kick-ass guest bloggers on it. That's, uh, there's a little, if you go to freedomfiends.com over on the right, there's a picture of a kitty cat says Fiends blog. And uh, that's good too if you're at work and you can't listen to audio at your desk, but you want to steal some time from from the tyrant who's uh, paying you to do work for him. Wait, is yeah, that tyrannical? Yeah. No, but if you're bored and get your job done, it's not stealing. If you do what you're paid to do, you have free time. You can check out the Fiends blog. Fiends yeah, blog. Or multitask. Fiends blog. I mean, 
Yeah, use it as your little personal time. Read read a blog post and then go back to filing TPS reports or whatever it is you do. So Nimi, you got our sixty second bump out queued up. We're almost there. And, you know, should we do should we just do some music at the end or do you want the bump? Yeah, just let some music play. Play that. All right, other I'm gonna bomb let song. the 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 song play that we were gonna play. The other song by my, by my band yeah. Bomb. And until then, we'll uh we'll see y'all. Same fiend chime, same fiend channel. Back here next Thursday at either uh I don't know sometime. <laughs> we'll know before then and there'll be a bumper for it. Contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post 1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post.
Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.